Hey, welcome to Go Fish with Dan Kenny. I'm down in Ormond Beach, Florida. I'm with Captain Scott Cornelius from the Good Life Charters. What's the game plan, man? What we're gonna do, we're gonna do some creek mouth fishing, do some island point fishing. We're gonna do some poling along the flats. We're gonna be searching for redfish, trout, and flounder. Maybe find some black drum also. All right, let's go do it. Enjoy the show. He's ready to go. He's, he's fired up. <laughs> now for initiation, you have to bite the head off of a mullet on the tournament pirate boat and say R. There you go. And say R? R. Bite the head right off of him? All right. If I, oh, look at that, I caught him again. He doesn't want you to. No, this is a good size mullet. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, I just lost the bait. Well, we got the R out of you. We didn't get the, the I got the R. Bait, he poked me, that little sucker. Nope, 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 nope. Got a nice molar here. Captain Corn. Initiation. He said you gotta bite him and go, ah! So, do I have to eat the head? Or no, no, bite? you'll wanna spit it out immediately. You probably won't have a choice. Your reaction will be quick. Right. All right, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm good now. I'm good. Ah! Ah! I'm ready to fish now. I never thought I'd get anybody else to do that. That was just one of those things me and my buddies did one time for fun. Oh, I'm game. I did it. He's the real deal. <laughs> you didn't like ah, He's the real something. You, you're, you're disgusting. Did you see the guts come out? I, I heard it crunch. That was so gross. I heard it crunch like three times. And you were trying to bark. <laughs> you got blood on your teeth too. You... Oh my god! It's so gross! It is very gross. Did you hear Did you get the stomach? Oh, there's a manatee right there. Oh wow. Where? He's right there by the boat. If it was a snake, it would have bit you. If it was a gator, we'd all be freaking out. Hey guys, just wanted to show you this little red we just got in the cast net real quick. We'll get them back in the water as fast as possible. Um, you don't see a little red like this on a regular basis, but what's neat about him, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 spots. A little four and a half inch redfish. <laughs> nice. We'll, we'll get him back in the water. Do a little hang out. There he goes. Gone. Good life charters, catching reds. What we're doing right now, just grabbing a little mullet out of here. This guy that I'm going to show you is perfect for what I like to do. Just about four inches long, just a little mullet. Strong enough to swim, but not strong enough to make this disappear we kind of want to make this little weight a lot of times i'll use a jig head so i'm gonna i'll actually start with the jig head use the jig head and i'll hook them just behind the dorsal fin in the back just like that 
and what he's going to do is this is going to kind of hold him down and he's just going to flop on his side and what that's going to do is put that little extra vibration in the ground right stir a little bit of the ground up the redfish have those little nostrils right in the front of their face and they're kind of like pigs and hogs they root around in the ground they're bottom feeders uh, so we want to keep our bait down on the bottom since we're hunting for reds today um, if we were to have this guy swimming around up top it makes it harder we may get hits from redfish but it's going to make it harder to actually connect with them since their mouth is on the bottom of their head they actually have to come up and they have a hard time seeing up here but down below them they can smell they can feel and then they can see when they're pointing down so it makes it fun so what we'll do is make sure our drag is set just right perfect and then you take that and try to hit that shoreline right there That'll work for there, and then I'll come around to the right side and cast. Step to the left just a little bit. Yep. We'll give this about five, ten minutes, and then we'll move up if we need to. Without that rod's him going. Know. That rod's going. Already getting the bite. Yeah. That rod was just going, cap going. Dead shrimp. Something was like in that circle hook. So if it's a lazy man's fishing, so you. You should be. See, there you go. I told you. I was watching that rod go when. Catfish. <laughs> hey, we didn't get skunked. Didn't get skunked. That, that's a good sign right there. First fish of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Catfish. Stay here. Now what I like to do with these shrimp, with the circle hook, is you find the horn, and you find that right where the horn meets the head, and then you've got this little dark spot in here, like the head and the guts and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to get them there because that'll kill them. What you want to do is kind of meet them in the middle. Put the hook down and up, and that gives them the ability to walk around a little bit. It also stresses them a little, just a, a tiny little bit. Take the little horn off, that's just a personal thing I like to do. Little, any little extra scent, any attractant you can give this guy gives you that advantage. Come on, Bob Bob. I need a locked up. That one? Yep. It's a beauty. Wait till you see this one. Wait till you see, <laughs> wait till you see this right here. Captain Scott, check out this catch. First catch of the morning right here. Wow. Puffer fish. Look wow. at that. See them all blowing up? Foul hooked them. That is a masterpiece. Now, how many of your clients have foul hooked a puffer fish? Just one now. Just one. See that? Right that. Right that. Ready, baby? It's a good looking fish, too. Dan, you want a picture with it? Nope. <laughs> I want to get rid of that sucker as fast as possible and catch the red. There he is. He's all puffed up. See him? Yeah, you, I really don't want to hold the puffer fish for yeah, a picture. I understand that. Sorry, bud. Not happy with us. He's not happy with me right now, no? Like, dude, I'm fishing too. Buy it down. Flounder. It's yep. a flounder. Yep. I'm just going for these multi species, Captain Scott. You gonna net them for me? Yeah. Nice flounder. Got him. You got all your drag you need, man. Not to lose them. Quick release. Thank you. Just a little guy. I mean, look at that monster. Look at that monster flounder right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing you always have to be careful of is flounder have a real sharp but jagged teeth. So it's not like a bluefish or something like that. It's just going to cut real sharp. These guys, if they bite you, you're going to end up getting an infection because they're real slimy at the same time. So you definitely don't want to get bit by a flounder. Want to take a picture with him and let him go? They gotta be 12 inches and he doesn't have much meat on him even if he was 12. We'll catch another one. Yeah, I don't like to keep them if you don't have four full fillets. If you can't get two full fillets out of the bottom and the top, 
what's the point in killing a flounder? Let him grow, let him go, catch him another time, and make us another fun trip. You're watching Goldfish with Dan Kenny, and we'll be right back after this break. Perfect. Perfect, look at all those. This is my office. It's hot, it's loud, and you don't even want to know what I spend on gas. So when I get home, I want it to be comfortable without spending a fortune on fuel. That's why I chose a water furnace geothermal heat pump. Water furnace units use the free renewable energy stored in your backyard to save up to 70% on heating, cooling, and hot water. It's like taking two cars off the road. Two cars have suddenly vanished, handing Gordon the win here at Talad. What do you mean I can't pick which two? Get a strike? Yep. Got one? Need a net? Wait till you see this one. Oh, it's a... <laughs> Boom. It's edible. Ready. You want to net, you want to net this one? Species number three. Yep. Oysters. There we go. Look at that. Map that's, that one on the wall. Yep. I know a guy that could do that. That's going to go right in your living room. Let me see if I can. Wow, well, I buried it in there too. <laughs> yep. There we go. Oh, Perfect. Like a prize catch. Perfect. Look at all those. All those oysters. GoodLifeTrotters.com. That's it. Splash. Puffer fish. Oysters. Oysters. Red fish. We need a grand finale, at all, so we've got to wait. I can't put you on the reds in the beginning. All right. And don't, don't hook a dolphin, please. So what I was starting to say is, do you do, you do like, with a jerk bait, reel, twitch, twitch, reel, twitch, twitch, reel, like I'm doing, has that been effective? Yep. Or are you better off to drop it on the bottom, rod tip up, you can, I mix it up. Both. A little bit of both. We're in shallow water, so you really, that was if you're going one. up and down, you're really not doing a whole lot different than you are if you're dragging it. Just right. A little extra presentation. But I'll mix it up. Come on. Come on. A lot of movement. And every little. Hey, this is Dan Kenny from Goldfish, and I'm enjoying the Good Life Charters down here in Ormond Beach, Florida. Check them out, goodlifecharters.com. Fish, ladyfish. I've been seeing lots of them today. You gonna put that in for bait later? Yeah, I'm gonna cut them up now and put them on for bait. Redfish, it's a real bloody meat. Oh yeah. So we'll cut up this ladyfish. It always makes a good bait. If you catch a ladyfish, don't put them in the cooler. Just cut them up and put them on your lines right away. Good fresh bait. I'll take my Dexter bait knife here. Cut them up. That S-151's a beast, huh? This thing is awesome. <laughs> I, just, I just don't even... I just stuff it back here in the little case and leave it in the tackle bag. Are you going to throw it on this rod? It. Or are you going to put it on that one? Uh, we'll put it on this one. That one, we'll put it on this one here. Hook them under the mouth. I'm looking at this rod tip right here. It hasn't moved. The black one? Yeah. Let me put this back out here. 
Oh yeah, it's got a nice little weight on it. So you're basically bottom fishing that on a leader. Yeah. Up about three feet or two yep. feet. Yeah. yeah, it kind of lets it drift around a little bit. Yeah. Wiggle. The more it moves, the more it's going to yeah. scent out. Oh, I just noticed that. You had a, a little goose egg on the bottom, and hopefully that ladyfish becomes our friend. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's little things like the ladyfish that you catch, and that's all you've been catching. You cut them up, use them as bait. Uh, we, did a, we had a charter one time. We weren't catching anything at all. Nothing. We caught a crab, a blue crab. Somebody was picking on our bait. I said, well, bring it in. We netted the blue crab, cut them into quarters, casting them out, cost two nice reds. <laughs> right at the end of the day. It was like the last 15 yeah. minutes of the trip, too. So this one needs to be re-rigged. There you go, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Make sure there we go. You got the net over, over there? Over here on your right. Just didn't know where you went to. Catfish. Big old catfish. Yo. Woohoo. Man, that's an eater. Catfish or redfish? Which would you prefer to see? <laughs> I'm going for redfish. However, fish is fish. Better than no fish. Maybe. We'll see. It's a nice cat. Someone loves them. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. That's why they're what's out here the most. Oh, no, no. There's a guy on the Dexter Pro staff, Brad Durick. Eats catfish? From North Dakota. He's well, salt, freshwater catfish. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a catfish guide. You want a picture with this one, this beast? Uh, no, no, thank you. We'll get another one. This is an area that we used to be opened up called Jones Island or Pump House Road. You used to be able to drive back here. Now, now it's mostly private, just private property and, and you can tell it's all overgrown. Lots of snakes coming out of the edges on this little canal. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of large floating sticks that go by and then you get up to them and it's nothing on the bank. Big snakes. This looks very familiar with the thing in the Everglades where, we, like you said, y'all, you go and all of a sudden there's a snake, you get close and it's like, ooh, that was a pretty big snake. Mm-hmm. Like a big palm frond floating across or something and then nothing there. Fish just jumped right there. Well, Captain Scott, you're a weatherman down here. You know, he said the rain's gonna come in, maybe 40%. Uh, it's raining right now. It's getting pretty black over there. I'd say it's gonna be 100% chance of rain today. It looks like it. <laughs> I mean, this has gotta be 40% to somebody, but it looks 100% to me. Yes. Well, hopefully we can get a little bit more fishing in before anything starts booming. We'll give it a shot. This weather has been back and forth. Definitely affecting us on the water. See what we can do. <laughs> yeah. You're watching Go Fish with Dan Kenny. We'll be back to Ormond Beach, Florida after this break. Yeah. Bring it right to the net. Boom. Yeah. hang around race cars for a living, you get used to high performance. But wait till you see this baby.
Water furnace units use the free renewable energy stored in your backyard to save up to 70% on heating, cooling, and hot water. It's like taking two cars off the road. And thanks to a 30% federal tax credit, you'll save thousands on installation. That's why I chose Water Furnace for my house. You guys, you feeling weight? Uh, no, but it keeps going to slack and this has a weight on it. There we go. See that ladyfish? That's a trout. Yep. Decent little trout. You got the net, Captain? I didn't know you had something on there. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you want me to just bring it in? Yeah. Bring it right to the net. Boom. Yeah. Watch out the other lines there. Got him. Nice. That was good. Sweet. That was good. Hey, baby. How you doing? Pleased to meet you today. Hold on a second. Let me get this line. He didn't do much of anything, nope. did he? You know what I'm going to do, buddy? That's a good fighting fish. One that gets in the boat. There we go. Species. What is that, number eight or nine or 10? I don't know. Nice job. He'll flip right out if you don't grab him good. Yep. There's a beautiful fish, huh? Well, guys, we got another species of fish here. Uh, trout is one of my favorite fish to eat from the river. It's got such a clean fillet, real clean meat, real white meat to it, so you don't have to worry about any gamey flavor or anything like that. Uh, just put it in a skillet, a little bit of butter, a little bit of seasoning, you got yourself a good meal. Delish. Nice fish. It's a beauty. Thank you. It was a fun catch. Yeah. Nice. Look at Dang, that fish. Look at that snook. Look at that fish. Woo! Yeah, That's baby. A monster. This is a monster fish. Did you see him come out of the water? Power. Wow. Don't even bother He's clearing the lines. I'm just going to try to get him here. He's going to make some runs. Oh, yeah. There he goes. I'll set it. Yeah. Don't don't tighten it at all. No, no. I loosened it a click. Watch he doesn't cut us, cut us with his gill plates. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, he's gonna make that. All right, hold on. I gotta get him around that. He's gonna put us through a, uh, a little bit of some fun here. Bring him this side. This side. There he is. That's a monster smoke. That's great. Nice snook. No more tension than what you got. Nope. He's gonna take us, give us a little bit of time. Ugh. Yeah, I cleared that rod. He got off. He got off right there. Woo! Yeah, there was a monster snook. Got a good jump right outside the <laughs> creek mouth. This thing is just blowing up, what pulling drag. We couldn't do anything but try to fight him to the boat. He went everywhere we could possibly go. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I had to get the lines cleared. Went around this one. With a snook, of course, you don't want, you know, everywhere. Got them around your power pole, and hey, we saw him. Yeah, we had him right by the boat. It was a good fight. He was a monster. He would have had to go back anyway. He was oversized, and even if he was a keeper, we'd have let him go because the snook fishery around here has been getting so much better in the last few years since we had some freezes five, six years ago. That was awesome. Yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah. You don't always have to bring him in the boat. Redfish, trout, snook, ladyfish, everything. I mean, how many different species so far? Just a great day. Let's get another one. We'll go with that thing. <laughs> you don't have to horse it, everything's set properly. Oh, nice fighter. Look at this. Should be a nice red on there. Let me get this Let's out of the way. All right, we're good. Yep, just keep that tip up and work them in. Let them hopefully tire himself out a bit. It's the name of the game from just about any species. 
Nice, fish. nice red. There we go. There we go. He's not liking the boat. There it goes. That's a nice fish. Yep. I'm gonna gain on him. You see, you heard that drag. Pull to the left slightly. Make sure you just keep up more than anything. If he goes left, you pull to the right. I'm gonna gain on him, let him go under the boat. Hold on. Circling around. I got Stay away from that slow. motor. He's not done. He's not done. He's a spunky one. Got him. Woo! Nice yeah. work. Right there. There we go. Nice red right there. Bam. That was good. Good life charters. Beautiful 24 inch red down here in Ormond Beach, Florida. Nice fish. Having a great time on the Good Life Charters. Hey everybody, this yeah. is Captain Scott Cornelius with the Good Life Charters. We've been pulling the backwaters here in the Tomoka Basin area in Ormond Beach, Florida. Uh, we're getting chased off by another storm. So what we're gonna do is head back towards the dock. If we can get a clearing in the weather, we uh, see if we can get another one in the boat. Hey ladies and gentlemen, so it is pouring out torrential in Almond Beach, Florida. So we went out with Scott and now this is his lovely bride, Ashley. Hello. We're gonna have a little chat about, you know, your business model and, and what you're doing down here. The Good Life Charters is all about having a great time on the water. You know, safety is always our number one goal. We go through a good safety drill with everybody. We explain what we have on board, what we're required to have on board and we end up with almost double of everything that we're required to have on board. So it makes everybody feel more comfortable. Um, we do end up spending the majority of our time in shallow water, which makes, makes for a great time. It makes for good fishing, makes for fun trips. We stay out of the, the, the rough weather. Right. Um, and it's just all about having a great time, catching some fish, sometimes just stopping at a beach, having a little barbecue. Basically anything that our clients come to us and say they want to do, we open up ourselves and we will make that available as long as it's within our opportunities. Right. Um, Ashley here, she's like the better half of our business. No know? doubt. I mean, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> we go out, you know, I'll put people on fish. I take people out on the boat, show them a great time. Ashley works a normal job, 40 hours a week, right. and then mm -hmm. she comes home, takes care of all the books, make sure we have the proper forms for everyone to sign, make sure everything's sent in in time, um, because I'm out fishing when I'm supposed to be sending in paperwork. So Ashley right. makes sure that we're in line. Mm -hmm. And uh, she helps us keep the boats clean when we're really busy and I have a morning trip and I go home, drop off a boat, come pick up another boat, go take another group out. I come back from the second trip and Ashley's there, she's already come home from work and then got everything cleaned up and ready to go for the next day. So it makes, it makes my life a lot easier, makes the Good Life Charters a lot better as a company as a whole. And uh, she just do a great job taking care of everything. First she mate. rocks. First mate, <laughs> Ashley, right here. And we, you know, Based on the pictures that I saw, you know, yesterday, the tournament that you fished, you know, she can, she can hold her own with the oh, rod, yeah. right? She'll outfish me many times of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Fun she outfished us today. So, so far. So far. <laughs> so far. We, she, we were out this morning, and like I said, the thunderstorms came in, and it was tough out there. All right, so once again, folks, Almond Beach, Florida. If you don't know where that is, it's right above Daytona. And you can look up the Good Life Charters, goodlifecharters.com. Scott, Ashley, check them out. And do you have anything else to add? Just make sure you like us on Facebook. That is the best way to keep up with the Good Life Charters is follow us on Facebook. Give us a like, share some fish catching pictures that you have, uh, shoot us a message and say, hey, do you guys offer this kind of tour? We're gonna be here in town this time of, time of the year. Or what's the best time of the year to catch redfish? What's the best time of year to catch trout, snook, black drum, flounder? We can set you up so that you come into town and have the best opportunity to catch the species that you're after, whichever time of year it is. You know, September's a great month all, the, all around, um, but spring and fall are typically what you want to target. The heat of the summer and the cool of the winter slows down a little bit, but there's always fish to catch, so it's always a lot of fun.